take a little look under the cloche. Go for it. Oh no, it's got a plastic knob. Oh no. <laughs> Today we've got two normal home cooks in our kitchen and they're going to be putting to the test a whole bunch of kitchen gadgets that you've mm. recommended for them. Let's see how they get on. It's one of those pans that doesn't go there. Oh yeah, because look, it's got a... Oh it's, yeah, it's got a kettle. <coughs> it's got a kettle, kettle plug. plug. And it's got a knob, zero, one and two on it. So this is a self-heating pan. Boys, this is the high trick portable saucepan and they say this gadget is an essential appliance for every kitchen capable of replacing traditional stove kitchenware its non-stick coating and rapid heating ability makes for a convenient appliance which is compact easy to clean and easy to store with its three heat settings you can cook anything from boiling pasta to sauteing shrimp actually so that's a good point it's plug-in not batch operated. Yes. So there's a better chance of it producing some proper right. heat. Yeah. Perfect for people who don't have comprehensive kitchens, maybe don't have much space. Also, great for when you're traveling. Breakfast in bed. Breakfast in bed. Well, let's literally put them to the test. It's got to get yeah. raging hot. Yeah, it has to. But it's also got to be simmerable. Mm. So. We've got to boil water. Yeah. Would you like to cook a stir fry? Oh, challenge on. That is a challenge. So we're giving you some stir fry ingredients there. So right. plug in your saucepan and let, what? Well, <laughs> the lead could be longer. Ooh. That is getting quite hotter, quicker than our hobs do. Well, I'll tell you what, Bads, that'll be because it has a round shaped embedded heating element uh, technology, which will keep your food heated evenly and cooks quicker. Shimmering straight away. Mm. I mean, to are. be fair, that has got hot in about 15 seconds. It's, it's quite surreal not having any heat source at all. And would you say that the outside of the pan is hot? Or yeah, lovely? it's barely warm. Okay, it's got a lovely degree of overheating protection. I mean, I, I can stir fly on my chest. Well, <laughs> I mean, that's remarkable. Prawns in. in. Have you got a little I'm bit of charring on the corn as well? Like, it's hot, it is hot. So the other thing I suppose to compare it to is slow cookers. They're electric, they don't use up your hob. But I imagine it, it probably is similar to the output of a kettle, which we know uses up. You watch your smart meter basically have a heart attack every time you turn on your kettle. Also, kettle, great for making broths. <laughs> Go. Soy in. Yep. Go. Unplug your pan. So I, I will say, for stir frying, we've challenged it probably a little bit too far. It, yep. it works. It's worked, yeah. But it's not like what you look for from a stir fry. No. It's tasty. It's done a job of a home stir fry, I would say. Yeah. Okay. It's very similar to the type of thing that I would cook at home. First impressions where it's a it looks a bit plasticky. Mm -hmm. I can't think of many situations where I would benefit from using it, but, I, but you cannot deny that it heats up and it works. I'm surprised by how much I like it. It's, it's for people who don't have a fully kitted out kitchen. It's probably really good for students because you're gonna be cooking your basic stuff in it. Pasta, like all the, all the simple, easy yeah. staples. Yeah. Right then, well, how much do you think the high trick portable saucepan cost us? 40 20 pounds. Quid. 20 quid. We paid 35 pounds and 99 pence. I thought it would be terrible. Same. But it's not. It works. It does a job. That job probably wouldn't benefit me personally, but there may be people out there who would benefit from it. So obviously everyone in the audience is waiting for your answer uh, to the next question, which is uh, the high trick portable saucepan, cooking on the go or cooking no, no, no? I'm gonna say cooking on the go because it's the positive one, but I don't think you'd use it on the go. I think you'd use it if you didn't have a, a hob or a pan. It's a, it's a no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring on number two. Do you genuinely think you're gonna win this? Yeah, I genuinely do. Gosh, weirdos. You're going to struggle. 
I want to win. I should coast easily over the finish line ahead of him. Okie dokie, lift the closhy. <laughs> oh, I know what this is. This has been Whoa, it's so marketed heavy. to me beyond belief. It's a knife sharpener. Thank you, Barry Taylor. Boys, this is the Hall 2 knife sharpener. The revolutionary Hall 2 sharpener takes the guesswork out of the most tricky aspect of using a whetstone, getting the sharpening angle correct. It's also exponentially quicker as there's no soaking needed. But, like a whetstone, it's suitable to use on both Western and Japanese knives. Ooh. Do you have two parts to it? There's the angle support bar and there's the roller. The knife, blade side up, attaches to the angle support bar, uh, which has a 20 degree side and a 15 degree side. And the knife stays in place because of the strong magnets in it. You then use the roller back and forth on either side of the blade for a few times. The roller also has two sides, a diamond disc for sharpening and a ceramic disc for honing. German style, 20 degrees. Sharpen it. One way, both ways? Both ways, back and forth. Quite. Oh, I don't like it! <laughs> <laughs> so other side, turn it that way. That way around, yep. Yeah, doing it quicker makes my nipples feel less <laughs> itchy. <laughs> <laughs> So now you're honing it. Oh, that's satisfying. That's quite <laughs> nice. I don't mind that one. So how do you both sharpen your knives at home? Uh, with a one of them. And how often do you do that? Um, whenever I nearly chop my finger off. Okay. Uh, I use one of the drawback ones. You yeah. stick to the surface, draw it in, but I'll do that probably once a year. Yeah, and I think both methods, eventually you end up whittling your knife away. Whittle's not the correct one. <laughs> that has worked. That has worked. That is, okay, right. Sharpening it like this is really easy. There's a barrier to entry in terms of people look at it and go, I'm daunted and a bit scared by the idea of running a knife back and forth like this. That feels more user-friendly and in control. It's very satisfying. A sharp knife. Oh, wonderful. Oh, it's far more user-friendly than learning how to use a whetstone making yeah. sure that you're getting the angle yeah. correct yourself by doing it. Like if you've spent a lot of money on a knife, you want to know that you're treating it in the best way that you possibly can. So all of the uh, parts for the haul are interchangeable, so you can get um, different grit ratings uh, for your sharpening and for your honing. Uh, you can get different angles. Um, so it's all interchangeable. Also, in case you wear it out or need to replace anything, you can be. It works and it's easy to use and it's well designed. So, what is the price? Well, Michael, why don't I ask you, what do you think is the price? A good entry-level chef's knife, you're paying between 20 and 30 yeah, pounds yeah, for. Yeah, easy, easily. I'm gonna say 20 pounds. I'm gonna say 35 pounds. The Hall Knife Sharpener, 159 pounds. Okay. Oh, so, the ballpark shock. you were thinking is in a different county to the one we're in. It's a diff <laughs> completely different baseball game. Yeah. I've just remembered why I didn't buy one of these. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good quality. It looks lovely. They've got experience from people who have learned how to use the whetstones who now don't use them because they, okay. they use this. They get as good a results from using this. It's quicker and easier. Yeah. I'm happy to leave it there. Mm. If you can afford it, first, good on you. What do you do for a living? Let me know. <laughs> um, and maybe you use it in a volume where it justifies its price. Yeah. Fine. So the Hall 2 knife sharpener, is it a cut above the rest or does it just leave you feeling like an absolute James Blunt? <laughs> Did you come up with these? Yeah. yeah. It's a cut above the rest in operation, but also in price. Yeah. Worth it, but it comes at a cost. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> 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 Ready for another? Yeah. I'm getting ready for something big. Come on, go, go. Ready? Go, go, go. Sorry, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I've read what it says and it doesn't make any sense. The snack can coating bowl. Stainless steel, dishwasher safe, 
a ridge on design, the snack coater. What, what oh, did oh, I just oh, say? Oh, oh, a ridge, you a ridge, a ridge, a ridge. And a locking oh, mechanism. Quick. Quick lock. So it's this way round. But what does it plug oh. into? What does it lock? It's not. You haven't given us the full gadge. Well, now it makes complete sense. <laughs> right, whilst they figure this out, I'll tell you. This is the IEVE Snack Coater. Unleash flavour and fun with Snack Coater. The perfect attachment for coating nuts, truffles and a wide variety of confections with tempered chocolate and other coatings. It no, what you're saying is helping us with what the hell this thing does. How do you think they make chocolate covered raisins or sugar coated almonds? But what what does it plug things, into? Why, what's... Why don't you get the stand mixer from the back of the set? Right, we've got this machine and we're no close to understanding. No closer to understanding. Into the pasta roller or meat grinder attachment. No, no. So that turns. <gasps> what does that? Tighten up. How would you usually use a stand mixer? You'd need to... Ah, oh, but now your snacks are going to fall out. So you see the little black thing that you also got? Lift your stand mixer back up. Put your little black thing in the, in the hole. There you go, in there. That's it. Now you can turn it on. Well, I get well, it. Well, tell you what. Did you put nuts in there and chocolate. And, and it, just, oh, it just and, tumbles it. And it tumbles them. This is a really easy way to evenly coat items such as nuts, fruits, those kind of things. The spinning helps to make it an even coating. Do you want to give it a go? Yeah. Yes. yes. So we're giving you some melted chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> no, you haven't. <laughs> You gave us chocolate at which we had to melt and it's taken ages. So you're going to put all of your nuts into the container and then put it onto speed number one. Right, nuts going in. Place a few drops of the chocolate into the container and let's watch that for a few minutes and see how that all comes together. Well, it seems to have worked. Yeah. Have they dried? Are they clumped? They've dried and they are not clumped. Yeah, you, you couldn't get that finish any other way, could you? And that's what they say. It's easier to achieve a uniform coating whilst saving time mm. and reduces the risk of contamination because you're not getting your hands in there. Mm. You're not trying to do it that way. And I guess if you want a thicker coating, you've just got to do multiple small coats. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we skipped a step from tempering the chocolate because yeah. there's no chefs here and we couldn't be bothered to look up the temperatures. But <laughs> that would affect the end result as well mm. that you get. How do they taste? Yeah, really lovely. nice. Lovely. Added a bit of sea salt. I can see myself using this for popcorn. Oh, more than popcorn, anything else. that'd be great. Yeah. It's quite a gadget. It is quite a gadget and it, it, it works brilliantly. It feels to me like one of the types of gadgets that could stray into the professional yeah. Yeah, kitchen yeah, gadgets yeah. world as well. Right, how much do you think we paid for the Aive snack coater? 40 pounds for me. Yeah, I, I would never clue, so I will agree with Mike, 40 pounds. 99 pounds and 89 pence. Okay. So this definitely puts it in the real hobbyist moving into, I'm starting my own small business in creating snacks and sweets and things. And what we've learned for the pro kitchen gadget episodes are these things do tend to be mm. more expensive, mm. but they justify their price mm. because of the volume that they create. Is it a tasty little snack or, or did it just drive you nuts? Okay, it's a tasty little snack. And you're driving me nuts. Oh, oh. <laughs> one more. Final one for the day. Mm -hmm. Give the cloche a lift. All right. What the? <laughs> what the? Oh no, the stove, the stove top oh, stir mate. Oh no. This is the Stirmate pot stirrer. Need an extra hand in the kitchen or just need someone to stir your pot? Introducing the Stirmate, your stirring kitchen sidekick solution. Stirmate does much more than perfectly stir a pot. Its powerful motor stirs viscous candies, delicate risottos, and it's heat tolerable. So we've tested some uh, self-stirring cool. devices before. They've all been, what's the word? Terrible. They've this been flimsy in the past, actually, and this feels like the clamp on it has got a really tight spring. It feels, it feels really you know well made. It's really ugly but it doesn't matter because it feels like it's there to do a job. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. Do you know what it claims to do? Go on. It claims to end the pot stirring era. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. Wow.
Do you want to? Do you want to? Yes. Do you want to stir yeah, something? Yes, no, yes. you don't want to stir something. No, I don't want ah, to stir. Ah, this to stir something. Yeah. So we're giving you everything there to make a cheesy polenta. Clamps on. Hey, really clamps on. Hold it on tight. Can you, get, can you give it a twizzle? So why does it do this? What's that about? So what you're noticing there is that it's self-adjusting. Uh, to stir pots and pans six to 12 inches in diameter and three to nine inches in depth. It's got the little support stir as well. The, you've got bottom stir, you've got top stir. It's getting milk heating up. Then we'll add some polenta in. We won't give it a stir. And then we'll add some grated cheese. The powerful high torque gear motor silently stirs all foods to perfection, developing more flavor and creaminess. How does that sentence sit with you? I think it, should, it just says, it should just say, stirs it so you don't have to, no more burly bottoms. Yeah, it's That's the end of the stirring era. <laughs> so let's see. <laughs> Polenta is a great thing to test it out on because like a risotto, you have to keep stirring. It's worth pointing out that you can get other attachments for larger pots and uh, for increased agitation of foodstuffs. Okay, we're getting thick. Nice. Interestingly, as the polenta got thicker, it didn't slow down. No, no. Has it caught on the bottom? How are we looking? How are we looking? We probably needed a little bit more liquid in the polenta, but hey, that's that's all right. So we have got a little bit of a brown bottom. Quite a bit of a brown bottom. In terms of milk, one of the things that catches the easiest on these yeah. pans, and you really need to have quite a lot of strength against the bottom to be able to completely move it. Now, whilst the stir make pot stirrer was stirring your polenta. There's a lot of other things you could have been doing in the meantime, washing up, cooking something else, a different part of the dish, going for a wee. How useful would you find that? For big stews, I'm doing a, a quick cook or like a half an hour to hour cook, pointless. But if I want to go and do something else, like work outside for a little bit, I can leave that going. Can you see somewhere where it would be useful? The stir, mate, your, your kitchen sidekick, <laughs> is the best one we've used. It's yeah. sturdy, it's industrial, it works, but you don't need it. One use I can see for it is people with dexterity issues. The repeated movement of stirring something, uh, people with problems like arthritis, stuff like that. I thought like about that. that, but you actually have to press down on the clamp pretty hard. hard. Pretty stiff, I mean, it's well made, but that spring is pretty stiff. Okay, well, how much do you think we paid for the Sturmate pot stirrer? I think you paid 50 pounds for it. 40 quid. Add them together and a bit more, 102 pound 50. No way. No. What it isn't is useless in that it works, it does its job. Yeah. As actually the majority of the gadgets we've reviewed today. Yeah. They actually work and do their job. Yeah. The question is whether you think it's a job that needs doing. Well, the Sturmate pot stirrer, did it cause a stir or would you rather just do it yourself? I'd do it myself. <laughs> I would do it myself. <laughs> well over to you, comment down below, let us know which of those gadgets would you have in your kitchen, plus what should we be reviewing next?